Uh, today I'm going to show you how to do a natural sound bridge with natural sound and b-roll at the very beginning of our story. It's something, a technique we're also going to use at the end of our story. And so what you'll notice here is I've got all my clips of my interview already on my main timeline. Uh, this is the story of Annie who's visually impaired and she uses a braille machine to communicate. And so you'll notice I've got the sound bites kind of dictating the story. I've got Annie, I've got a clip uh, here, a couple clips from her mom. I've got a couple clips from her, her technology teacher who's also teaching her braille. But the majority of my sound here is from Annie um, and her story. Now, uh, it's about braille and there's actually a really great clip. You know, here braille is, it's a small tiny machine that she uses and it's got some great sound. And so we're gonna use the storytelling technique of pullback reveal which means we're gonna start with our very first shot being in tight, which you can totally do. So I've taught you kind of like the wide shot sets the scene for your story, but you can also do a tight shot to begin a story. Um, so you don't always have to use the wide. The wide shot clearly shows the setting, the location. The tight shot kind of draws you into the object and the sound, but then after the second and third shot, I'll need to kind of pull back and reveal who my character is, what the story is about. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do in my storage bin here is I'm gonna choose my sound bite, actually my natural sound and B-roll of the uh, Braille machine. So I'm gonna hit my endpoint. Okay, and my out point. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set that right on top of Annie right here. Okay, so my very first clip. Now that sound is gonna compete with each other. So what I need to do is I'm going to extend the very first clip here of my soundbite. Now what I want to do though is I want to put a marker to show that that's the beginning of the sound uh, the soundbite. So I'm going to highlight the Annie clip and I'm going to hit the letter M. And if you notice, I'm going to make my timeline here a little bit bigger. You see a tiny little marker right there on top of the clip. And so now what I can do is click on the end of the clip of Annie's soundbite, right where my soundbite's going to begin. And if I left click, I can kind of drag that out a little bit, right? So I made it longer than I really want it to be. Now watch what I can do. I can go ahead and just slide my natural sound and B-roll clip right over that point. And in fact, I might go a little bit more right there. Okay. So what I'm going to end up doing is, and you saw it in a couple of the examples, we're going to hear from our character before we see them. So here's what it would sound like right now. Okay, so you heard the reporter question, you heard the natural sound. We need to do some polishing and editing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blade the clip. I'm going to blade the sound bite. So B, right where I had set that marker. Notice where my playhead is here and my marker, and I'm going to blade that. Okay? I hit the letter A to reset and now I'm going to lower that sound. So I'm just gonna hover my mouse over that audio line and lower it. And so now it'll sound like this. Braille is a... Okay, so it still doesn't quite flow. So what I need to do, uh, a couple of things, and I'm gonna zoom in again here a little bit on my timeline so you can see really close detail. If you remember, we can hover over the end, the beginning and end of any clip, and you see that little bubble pop up right there on the uh, volume line. And if I hover my mouse over it, see the fade audio in? I've got the arrow, arrows left and right. I can do a tiny little like plus one frame, maybe plus two at the most. We don't want to fade her voice in so much that it sounds like she's coming from nothing. We want it to just kind of soften that clip, okay? Now the next thing we want to do is we're going to do some plot points. And we need to do plot points on the natural sound and B-roll. And if anybody's worked with GarageBand, you've, you're familiar with plot points. And so what we need to do uh, is to create a couple of plot points where we can fade the audio out on the natural sound. So the first thing we're going to do is put a plot point right where the sound bite starts right here. And I'm going to hold down option and I'm going to hover my arrow over the audio line. And I'm just going to click. See that little white dot? Now that's a plot point. All right, so now I need to come just maybe a second in front of that, and I'm gonna plot another one. So just option, hover my arrow over the audio line, click, 
And so now you see I've got these two plot points. Now I go back to the original one that I created and I'm going to click on it with just left click and I'm going to lower it. Notice the volume line now start to slowly go down until it completely fades. Okay? And now this is what it sounds like. Braille is a six star. All right, let's watch that one more time. We hear the great sound. In fact, we're going to raise this audio up a little bit. Remember, we want it between minus 12 and minus 6. So watch the main uh, master volume over here on the right. And then notice how it fades down as Annie begins to talk, but we still see a little bit of the Braille machine. Braille is a six dot. There you go. So that's called a natural sound bridge at the beginning. Now we also need to do one at the end. Okay, I'm going to make my timeline here a little bit shorter. And I'm going to go and I'm going to listen to my very last sound bite. Now you're also going to uh, add a voiceover as well. So here's my last sound bite. But in terms of Braille, um, that's just how I do my stuff. All right, so now I need to find a piece of B-roll to end with that I'm going to use my voiceover and natural sound and b-roll. So let's see if I can find a good shot of Annie. Here's a good one maybe. Let's play this one. Shot's kind of moving around a little bit. Let's see here. Let's find a good one. Let's get rid of that virus. That's kind of a good one right there. So let's see if we can get that long enough. We've got her name right there on the Braille machine. She's kind of talking to her friend. Okay, so let's just go back here a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to start it right here. I'm going to hit my endpoint. And my out point. Okay, and I'm going to add that right to the end. Go to the end. Okay. Now I need to do my voiceover, and you can do voiceover within Final Cut Pro. You can do it on a camera and just record it into a microphone. You can do it on your phone or your iPad. Um, and so right here would be where I would uh, add my voiceover. Reporting for LHS TV, I'm Don Goebel. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a little marker right there. Now, I didn't actually record the voiceover. Let's see if we can do that real fast here, if we can add the voiceover. Here we go. Record voiceover. Okay, so under Windows or Window at the top, you'll see voiceover, and now you can actually see my voice. So let's move the playhead back there, and I'm going to go ahead and just do like a quick sign-off for LHS TV. I'm Don Goble, like I just did. So I'm going to hit the red button to record. For LHS TV, I'm Don Goble. All right, let's play that back. For LHS TV, I'm Don Boy, it's, I don't know. That didn't sound too good. Here, let's go ahead and I'm just going to move this over here. I'm going to delete it. Let's do one more here. I'm going to actually raise the input of the gain here, input gain, to make it a little louder, my voice a little louder. Let's try six. Let's try that again. For LHS TV, I'm Don Goble. All right, let's try that one. For LHS TV, I'm Don Goble. Now that actually was too loud. See the red and yellow on the volume meter there? That's showing me that it's too loud. So let's go back and turn that volume down one more time. Notice that sometimes it just takes a few, uh, you know, got a few tries here. We got to revise. Doesn't always happen at first. All right, let's try it one more time. For LHS TV, I'm Don Goble. So I just needed to just kind of talk a little louder. So let's try that one. For LHS TV, I'm Don Goble. Okay, so now what we need to do is lower the volume on the natural sound and B-roll so we don't have that competing with the voiceover. So I'm going to do plot points again. So notice I'm going, let's make the timeline a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. I'm going to hit option right at the end of my voiceover. Okay, and then maybe just like, I don't know, 
a half second or a second in front of that. And I'm going to go back to the original plot point and I'm going to lower that. Maybe not completely, but just a little bit. So it's just very subtle in the background. I'm going to raise this volume up a tiny bit. Okay. Now let's go ahead and play that and see if we can hear my voiceover with a little bit of natural sound in the background and then end with complete natural sound. For LHS TV, I'm Don Goble. Cool, we even heard the little ding in the machine there. Now actually, I can extend this a little bit. Let's see here. Don Goble. Because my voiceover actually ends right there, so I'm just gonna highlight the end of this clip and just kind of move it down there. And so now I can actually start my natural sound a little bit sooner. But I want the slow fade in. Let's try one more time. For LHS TV, I'm Don Goble. Maybe not quite that much. Let's move it to about right there. For LHS TV, I'm Don Goble. Okay. And then we want to fade the audio out. And we don't have to do plot points for that. We can just hover over the end again. You see the little bubble pop open right here at the end. Let's make it bigger. And we're just going to kind of go back maybe a couple of frames. All right, we'll try that one final time. For LHS TV, I'm Don Goble. All right, so we're going to do that at the end as well. So that's what I would like you guys to try to do if you're at that point today in class. If not, um, you can work on it for next class. But if you have any questions about how to do that, you've got this video to go back and play over and over to watch bit by bit all of the details of how to use the natural sound bridge in the beginning and the natural sound bridge at the end. Okay, and I'll be back in class on Wednesday. See you then.